Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. When you think about 2017, what are you going to remember from this year? For me, it's going to be all the areas of soybean fields that had iron deficiency chlorosis or sudden death syndrome. It was quite the disease year. And many of those diseases come down to wet feet for those plants early in the season. We're going to talk about specific fixes for that problem. Well, I don't care if that was soybeans or it could have been corn or wheat or any crop. That drainage thing is a really big issue. But you know what, we're in soybeans. I'm standing in a soybean field right now and I'm thinking about how can I increase my yield coming up in August. This is a really important month and I don't care if your beans are late planted like these or they were early planted. August is super important. We want to talk about some of the steps you may take still to increase your soybean yield. And one of the things you always want to stop out in your fields if you want to get high yields is weeds like our weed of the week. This one's very common, but we'll show you how to identify it and distinguish it from other weeds. First, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about sweep nets, like the one I've got in my hand here, and how you can use this for insect scouting. I don't know why, but I always get nervous whenever I see something like a sweep net in my brother's hands, like he's going to put the net over my head or something. This isn't a, a net for catching people, it's a net for catching bugs. And for farmers when they're out in their fields, one of the big concerns they have is, will there be an insect? that takes away from my yield? Will it chew on my leaves? Will it eat the seeds that are out in the field? And honestly, in almost every field I've ever been in, yes, there have been some harmful bugs. So for farmers to get a good feel for how many of those bugs are out there, it's tough just to physically look and see if you see the bugs. But using a sweep net allows you to catch the bugs off guard and you can really get a more uh, representative sample of what's going on in your field. So the whole point is you take the sweep net and you sweep back and forth a certain number of times. There will be a lot of insect thresholds and a lot of published information that's out there saying, okay, if you sweep back and forth, let's call it 10 times, and you find X number of bugs out there, that's the point where you can justify a treatment. Now certainly there are times that you can do this and times that you can't. So for example, in a short soybean field like what we're in today, no problem. You can go through soybeans, you know, pretty good sized soybeans with the sweep net because the beans don't really get that tall. But when you look at a cornfield, yeah, if you've got a 10 foot tall cornfield, you're not going to be running a sweep net anymore out there. So you normally are using the sweep net early in the season or in crops like alfalfa or soybeans or wheat uh, that you can go through it all season long. So the great thing about the sweep net is it just allows you to collect a lot of bugs in a hurry so you can make that field scouting and, and make your decision as to whether or not you should spray with an insecticide very quickly. It's really difficult if you're going to go through even a soybean field like this one that's relatively small and look at every single leaf, it's painstaking. Whereas I can sweep through, do 10 sweeps in 10 seconds and take a look at the, the inside that sweep net and bam, I'm able to make a decision. I guess the big thing that I would say here is when we talk about making a decision whether to spray or not, it's identifying what are the good bugs and what are the bad bugs. So undoubtedly, if you are not an insect expert, you're going to have a few bugs that show up in your sweep net where you go, wow, I don't really know even what that bug is. It's very easy today with modern phones. You can take a picture, send it to someone and say, hey, what is this bug? And usually you can get it identified very quickly because there are beneficial insects that are out in the field, predator insects that will eat other bugs, like a ladybug, for example, loves to eat soybean aphids. So if you've got aphids out in a field and you say, well, my aphids are at a pretty low level, but man, I caught a whole bunch of ladybugs, great, the ladybugs are taking care of the aphids. But if you see the other way around where, wow, I just got a million aphids and I only saw one ladybug out in the field, well, you know the beneficials aren't out there in high enough populations to really help you. So getting out with a sweep net in your field is important. The other thing you should be doing in fields is scouting them for weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed?
Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. We love the quality, we love the construction. We're looking forward to working with Morton in the future. They have this down to a science. They know exactly what you want. They know how to make it happen. It's an easy process. I would definitely recommend Morton. From the first time I met the salesman to the last nail that the crew put in, it has been a positive and professional experience. I'm so happy I found Morton because they just make the job so easy. Find the building of your dreams at mortonbuildings.com. Invisible, invasive, underestimated, nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields and current protection methods aren't enough. But a new seed treatment technology controls nematodes before they attack. Introducing Nemastrike technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. Take back your bushels with Nemastrike technology. Strike where nematodes attack. The Guardian Air Twin Spray Nozzle from Hypro produces a twin spray pattern with air inducted droplets for superior coverage, even in dense canopies. Be effective and efficient with your spray application this season with the Guardian Air Twin. Hypro, helping you spray better. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. One of the great things about modern agriculture is it's getting easier and easier to pinpoint problem areas out in fields. 2017 is a great example when you look at iron deficiency chlorosis, sudden death syndrome, uh, seed and seedling diseases, and many more problems that are out in the field. Now when you're marking those spots off, you can do it with your yield monitor at harvest time. You can do it when you're out there during the season as well. I encourage you, mark those areas off and then address them. Many of these problems that I've talked about so far are a result of poor drainage. And even in fields where farmers say, I've got pattern tile out in my field, how can it be poor drainage? We'll talk about identifying those little spots out in fields and fixing them for good. Yeah, it's just so funny how a lot of the problems in agriculture stem back to that drainage issue. Like even weeds, for example. I think about where do we see yellow nut sedge? Where do we see scouring rush? Well, that's predominantly in areas that have poor drainage. If I've got a problem with, oh, let's say I've got a little pocket in the field where the leaves are curling up, the plant is small, it might just be high salt. Again, that's a poor drainage issue. Maybe I have another couple of pockets in the field where I had a lot of seed or seedling disease issues. Again, poor drainage. There are just so many things that stem back to this. So there are two big things we always talk about. It's having the proper fertility out there, the right nutrients, and then good drainage in your soil. All right, so let's talk about that drainage component because as I mentioned, sometimes I'll talk to farmers and they'll say, I don't understand why I have this problem. I have pattern tile out in my field. Well, the question then becomes, when did you put the tile in? Is it in good shape and all that? And if all those answers are, are yes, everything's great, it's working just fine, then the problem may be that you've got very heavy soil. And as we go across our fields, we see soil types change uh, from lighter soils to heavier soils and that kind of thing. In general, though, uh, if you're looking at, at a certain area and you say, well, on my farm, I've got you know this particular soil. It doesn't vary like from a 1 CEC to a 50 uh, in 5 feet everywhere, but you may have some of those spots out on your farm. Anyway, if you've got a heavy soil, the way that we measure this and compare to other soils is looking at the cation exchange capacity on a soil test. So when Brian and I see a problem area out in our field, a lot of times we'll direct the soil sampling program to, hey, make sure we get a soil sample out of this area in the field because we want to learn what's going on there and try and fix it. Now, it may be a high salt problem like Brian mentioned, or it may just be we've got this heavy, heavy soil that doesn't drain and our 100 foot tile spacing is not going to work in a cation exchange capacity of 30. So in that case, you just need to get the lines closer together. And you know what? Unfortunately, in some cases, you might need to have lines 15 or 20 feet apart. Now, I'm not saying maybe necessarily across an entire field, but let's say you've got a lower, wetter area 
and you just continue to have problems, you got a CEC of 30 or 40 or 50, something like that, that is super heavy soil. You've got to have lines that are really close together. So that's the biggest thing that I would say. The next thing is, what's the depth of your tile line? So a lot of guys years ago used to put the lines in really deep. We found some stuff that's 100 years old on our farm at six feet deep. Well, it's six feet deep, it's taking forever for that water to move down there. And then when it does, um, how, how good a job are we really doing? In other words, could there be some compaction levels in between? You've got to make sure you've got compaction addressed properly. And if you can keep that tile relatively shallow, especially in those really heavy areas, those low areas that are poorly drained, keep that tile line at two and a half, three feet, something like that. Now you can move the water a little bit faster and you're going to be more efficient because you can affect that top two and a half or three feet much easier to reduce the compaction. Once you start adding more lines into your drainage system, it changes everything, right? If your lines are set up to, wow, we're gonna feed this one particular main, you may need to add another main or a bigger main into your field to be able to handle this much water leaving your field. So the reason why we're talking about this today is we really want you to get out, scout in your fields and try to figure out, hey, if I've got a drainage issue, I've got time now, I can spend the next couple of months getting everything I need to do for approvals, making the plan, getting somebody lined up to do the tiling, or hopefully you have your own tile plow like we do on our farm. And then when fall hits, as soon as that crop comes off, you're ready to go, you can get the drainage addressed. And then a lot of these problems are gonna to start to go away in time. Well, addressing these specific drainage problems out in your field can definitely help your farm get more yield. So can controlling our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this tough wheat later in the show. With the success of the Case IH Tiger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Invisible, invasive, underestimated, nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields, and current protection methods aren't enough. But a new seed treatment technology controls nematodes before they attack. Introducing Nemastrike technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. Take back your bushels with Nemastrike technology. Strike where nematodes attack. There are micronutrients throughout the league, Joe. But let's take a look at Micro 500. Yeah, the synergy of the micronutrients in this guy have raised the bar on the field. Those others are just want to be Micro 500s. So you think this is the player you'd want on your team? You bet, whether it's offense, defense, special teams, Micro 500 always has a place on the field. <laughs> okay. You can check out Micro 500 stats at agroliquid.com. M, P, and K. They're critical for a healthy crop. Improve their availability and your yield potential with Quick Roots Microbial Seed Inoculant. Quick Roots technology contains two powerful microbes that can help improve access to key nutrients, and it's available in an easy to apply formulation. Simply mix it directly into your dry planter box and your seeds will be covered. Learn more at MonsantoBioAg.com slash Quick Roots. I'm Lisa Kelly. You might know me from History's Ice Road Truckers, but this summer, I'm looking for a change of scenery. We'll be visiting Love's Travel Stops in search of people who, like Dello, are game changers. I can't wait to meet as many of you as possible. Join me as I make my way across America with Chevron to get the word out about its game-changing heavy-duty diesel engine oil, Dello 400, with Isosin Advanced Technology. We'll see you out there on the road all summer long with Chevron, Dello, and Love's. A little bit earlier on today's show, we talked about insects and insect scouting. Well, now we want to focus on late season in soybeans. What can you do to increase yield? Obviously, we got the insect thing. We'll talk about that just a little bit more. But in addition to that, we wanted to discuss diseases, late season weed control, and even fertility in soybeans. I'll just start with the fertility piece, Brian. When you think about soybeans, once they hit that reproductive stage, they have a high demand for nutrients. They need available nutrients 
uh, to get into that plant quickly. This is why so often we hear farmers say, well, August rains make soybeans in the upper Midwest. They do. Why? Because you're flushing a whole bunch of nutrients into that crop. So the key thing that you can control, whether you're a dry land farmer or an irrigated farmer, is to have nutrients there so that when we do get moisture, they can get into the plant. Uh, on our farm last year, it was really interesting at our field day site uh, in our first step trials where we're taking our first steps to higher yields. We ran out of gas with potassium. We got some 90 bushel soybeans, but we still ran out of gas on potassium. There's going to be something, there's going to be a nutrient that ends up being a yield limiting factor for you and your farm. Now, hopefully it's not N, P, or K, because if it's not, uh, well, that means you're doing a great job on the big things. But to find out exactly what that nutrient is, you've got to do some plant tissue analysis through the season. This is a great time to be doing plant tissue tests in your soybean fields and tracking those nutrient levels as the season progresses. And then correlate that back to your soil test data to try and get a full picture of what's happening in the field. All right, but here's the big thing. A lot of people say, well, I just need nitrogen late in the season for soybeans. In a lot of cases in heavy soil, you don't. Here's what I'm getting at. Organic matter in the soil is going to break down and release free nitrogen for your soybean plant. Yes, it's possible if we're talking 80, 90, 100, 120 bushel beans, you need more N. But if you're only talking 50 or 60 bushel beans in soils where you have 3, 4, 5% organic matter, there's probably going to be enough nitrogen coming available out of that organic matter. I doubt that nitrogen is your problem. It could be, but I doubt it. More likely, it's potassium or a micronutrient. Now when it comes to potassium, that can move through the soil to some degree in really sandy soil. But the problem is if you've got heavier soil, let's say your cation exchange capacity is 15, 20, 25, 30, something like that, well, you can throw potassium on the soil. It's not going anywhere. So you say, well, how do I get potassium into the plant? You can do a little foliar feeding, but more than anything, you've got to build up your soil for the long term. So like Darren said, that nutrient is available and sitting there ready to go when your plant actually needs it in that heavy ground. The other thing you need to be able to utilize all those nutrients is you have to have a healthy plant that has lots of good green plant tissue that's catching sunlight and producing energy for the plant. Now, when we think about leaf diseases in soybeans, it's a little different than thinking about them in corn, uh, but we do have diseases that pop up in soybeans, depending on where you're at in the country, whether it's frog eye leaf spot in the south or aerial blight, or, or you have white mold or sudden death syndrome or different things that show up in the north. When you've got something like white mold, uh, I know many farmers this year were worried about white mold due to the weather that we were having and these kinds of things, so they sprayed at R1. Well, you have to spray again a couple weeks later and then again a couple weeks later if those weather conditions persist and white mold could be a factor throughout the rest of the season. The other thing we hear a lot about is plant health benefits and keeping that leaf tissue green and growing is excellent. It's a good way to keep your plant healthy. And yes, you may be putting those plant health applications of fungicides on right about now when we're in that R2, R3 and beyond stage. Well, the big thing with fungicides is just to understand the prices have come way down in the last few years. So we're going out with a half rate at that R1, R2, maybe R3 stage for three bucks an acre. It's $3. If you're already out there spraying something else, at least try some fungicide. And when you're doing yield checks, all you need is a one bushel gain and you doubled or tripled your money. So I'm just trying to say it can be very small incremental gains, yet you still got a good return. And I know you're probably thinking, hey, I need to cut costs, got to cut costs. Well, just don't cut stuff that's making you money. On our farm, spraying a fungicide has been making us money. We're gaining anywhere from one to five bushels by spraying a fungicide for $3. Okay, that sounds like a pretty good ROI to me. All right, the other thing when you're out spraying anything in the field, you may consider using some plant growth regulators or some biological type products. There are certainly many different products out there on the market today that could help improve growth, uh, speed up growth, uh, Im improve plant health even. Uh, so do consider some of those things. If you've been using some of those products, this may be the time that you're applying them. If you haven't tried any of those things and you think, wow, I've got all my fertility things and my weeds, insects and disease under control, all that stuff's good. 
now I could start using some of those extra pieces and maybe they'll add a little yield for you as well. Last thing I'll say in terms of weed control, you gotta make sure you check the label on the product. Ingenie and Extendamax, you're done at R1. Roundup, you're done at R2. Yes, some of the other products, maybe the grass killers, you can spray a little bit later, but there are a lot of herbicides that technically you're gonna be off label by the time you get to R3, R4. So again, just make sure you're checking the label. We want you to do everything you can in terms of getting great weed control, but you can see how important those residual herbicides are because once you start getting late in the season you run out of options pretty quick. So the key message today don't give up on your soybeans there's still plenty of time in most of the country to influence soybean yields and help your profits as well. Well we talked a little about weed control in soybeans and one of those weeds that may show up is our weed of the week. We'll tell you how to stop it coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Our weed of the week is an annual weed, it's green foxtail. Now there are a lot of different foxtail species out there and it's important to identify them sometimes. Sometimes it isn't as big a deal. Like for example, if you're spraying Roundup, Roundup doesn't care whether you have green foxtail, giant foxtail, yellow foxtail, yeah, but it's going to smoke all of them. A lot of people call that pigeon grass and we do like to figure out the difference, especially when we start talking about wheat. There are some products, for example, the old Puma, that was best on green foxtail. So you could use a lower rate if you had green foxtail as opposed to maybe yellow foxtail. All right, so yellow foxtail, we think of those long tufts of hair at the base of the leaf, right about where it hooks up with the stem. You don't see that on a green foxtail. It's the easiest way to identify between the two. With green foxtail, it does often get misdiagnosed or misidentified out in the field as woolly cup grass or, or other types of grass. When we think about it, when you peel back that leaf blade, you've got a hairy ligule. And then when you look at the seed, you'll see a very small foxtail seed. And this is one of those things, if you dig up any grass, the seed will be attached to the root, where woolly cup grass has a great big seed. So it's pretty easy to tell those two apart. All right, so real quickly, we really encourage you, get good pre-emerge weed control in all crops on green foxtail. Otherwise, your yield starts to get hurt very early on. Best things in corn one of the group 15s, Harness or Pass Outlook Dual in soybeans, we'd use the yellows, Trefland, Sonalander, Prowl, and then in wheat, I'd probably go early on with Prepare. Post-emergent wheat, I like Axial, post-emergent soybeans, there's a bunch of different products out there. I probably like Clethodim as well as any of them. And then post-emergent corn, you could use Accent Q if you're in conventional corn, otherwise Roundup and Liberty do a nice job. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week, but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. Invisible, invasive, underestimated, nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields and current protection methods aren't enough. But a new seed treatment technology controls nematodes before they attack. Introducing Nemastrike technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. Take back your bushels with Nemastrike technology. Strike where nematodes attack. Let's take a look at our picks for the championship season. We've got 10-34-0. No, no, no. I don't want to talk about them. I want to talk about this Agro Liquid team. Take a look at this lineup. They got it all. The talent, their players can meet any challenge on any field. The coaching staff, the best I've seen. So that's your pick? No discussions? Nope. Agro Liquid is the team. They're going all the way to the championship. <laughs> The main goal of harvest today is to get what you harvest. With the RPR system, you can have no rooter loss. Customer satisfaction that we're getting for every single one we've sold is just impeccable. Being able to use one set of concaves, there's nothing else on the market that compares to it. So far, looking behind the machine, I'm thoroughly impressed with them. I definitely recommend them to another farmer. The major thing was stopping rotor laws, and we've already done that. Getting companies to help me is my big thing right now. The thing works, and we're very happy with what we've been doing.
Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. My grandpa told me 15 years ago that he wished he had the equipment to manage soils that we had back when he farmed. One of his favorite tools at that time was a strip tillage machine. Today's Iron Talk will cover some of the neat features of strip tillage that are making a difference on our farm. The biggest disadvantage I can think of with strip tillage is the time that it takes to do it. If all you looked at was tilling up a field, you could sure run across it faster with a field cultivator or a soil finisher. However, when you consider how many jobs you're actually accomplishing with that one trip across the field, you may see things differently. First job, seed bed preparation. Maybe you're still using a field cultivator or a field finisher to accomplish this task. Yes, they can run faster, and they're generally much wider machines than a strip tiller. They do take time, though, and if you're strip tilling, you won't have to do them anymore. Second job, incorporating and managing residue. This is especially the case coming out of corn, but holds true for other crops as well. It may take an extra tillage pass in most systems to deal with large amounts of crop residue. We handle it all in one pass with the strip tillage machine, with a little assist from our chopping corn head on the combine. Third job, placing fertilizer. Where broadcast fertilizer is done, you'll notice a huge improvement in the efficiency of fertilizer when placed directly beneath the crop with strip tillage. What's neat here is strip tillage machines are adjustable and fertilizer can be either spread throughout the zone of tillage or placed in a concentrated band. We find the band to be important, especially with phosphorus that moves into plant roots through diffusion, and that can often be tied up in applications where it's spread thin. A fourth job, compaction management. This is a big deal too. Depending on what you're using for a strip tillage tool, you can really work on some compaction issues with your strip till pass. Now a shank can be beneficial, coulters maybe a little less so when dealing with compaction, but with the cog design on the soil warrior machine, you can really get some lift and fracturing down to 12 inches. We've also seen this design reduce the washing of soil down the row with spring rains compared to other machines. And there are even more benefits that we could talk about with strip tillage, but those four jobs we eliminate by running one pass of strip till speak for themselves. You use less fuel, machinery, and ultimately time going to strip till. And as my grandpa observed, the soil health benefits are there as well. That's all the time for this week's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt in a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Well, that's all the time for our show today, but before we go, we want to encourage you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. We're on Sirius XM channel 147 each weekday at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. A healthy soil helps to keep our air and water clean while providing a medium for productive crops, pastures, and shelter belts. To learn more about how farmers are improving the health of their soils, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.